We're live. I think we're live. We live? We're doing it. We're doing it. It's all happening. Mm. The start of each one of these is absolutely hilarious. Cool. Okay. Welcome to um, That Pedal Show VCQ Live. Dan here. Apparently. Nick here. Hello. Yay. I don't think we're live. You don't think we're live? We are live. Okay. We're live. It's happening. Yes. Welcome. Uh, yeah. Last week. We had, um, there we go. We're live. We're live. Hurrah. Hello. Good. <laughs> Sorry, it's always a bit touch and go, isn't it? Daniel? Yeah, you just, we, you, you we just don't know. know. We're sat here looking at a phone. Yeah, no, and, you, and the, the thing at the top of the video says stream status, bad. <laughs> so if it looks fuzzy or sounds bad, let us know. Um, anyway, there we are. Uh, hello from North Carolina. Hello, Pro Animal Devices. Hi, Scotty. Hello. Uh, great show, boys. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Great. Um, as BV has just said, who is moderating for us, thank you, BV. Um, we spend the first part of this live stream answering questions that came in on YouTube over the weekend mm -hmm. about the video that we are discussing. Which was, Indeed. Daniel? Uh, ten uh, trips, tips to get the best out of your fuzz. Yes. Ten ways to make fuzz work for you. That's the one. I think it was. Um, yeah. Kind of surprising, I thought. Well... Lots of nice comments. First of all, it has to be said, <laughs> you played your bum off. It well, was, I mean, that's your world. Th that's it, it's interesting. A lot of people made very nice comments that the Strat and the Fuzz Face and the Marshall and everything just worked brilliantly well and that I played well and everything, which was nice. But that- <laughs> Sorry, Strat, Fuzz Face, Marshall. Surprise, uh, surprise. Yeah, I know, that's, that's what's sort of surprising about it. And it is, that's the sound that inspires me personally. That mm. is absolutely home for me. And therefore, um, it came across pretty good in those sections. You did play spectacularly. I just play well, all the same right? stuff I always play. No, it just happened beautiful. to be at 100 watts and, well, at cranked and, and nice. That's so beautiful. thank you to everyone that's who said nice beautiful. things. And it, even better, I think it, it what seemed to come through in the comments was that it woke a lot of people up to, oh, wow, I didn't know you could do that. With a fuzz. Yeah, and throughout the whole 10 things. Sure. You know, yeah, just yeah, yeah. ideas to try. Yeah. Because that was the point, wasn't it? So many people say, don't get on with fuzz, don't understand it. Um, I yeah. didn't get it for a long time, <laughs> but then I fell down a, a massive rabbit hole with it. Well, let's start with iBloke version one then, <laughs> who says, I love TPS. Dan and Mick, you're great to watch. Compliments out of the way. I absolutely loathe fuzz. <laughs> Hate it with a passion. It disgusts me. To my ears, fuzz is audio vomit. And I'm not alone, as not one of my muso friends likes it either. We're all happy to stick to the myriad beautiful sounding overdrives and distortions. Just shows how polarizing it is, doesn't it? Okay, it's weird. It was I, so beautiful. I find it weird. I don't know how you can just write off like most of music history from yeah. 68 to... Anyway, whatever. Anyway. Good. Elliot Taylor says, I've always struggled with fuzz in front of overdrives as it becomes very muddy. What do the characteristics of the clon? Um, what, char what characteristics of the clon make it work in front of fuzzers? I don't know where my son gets his um, uh, what do you call it? A dyslexia, dyslexia from. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you have Do you have to back off the gain of the overdrive? How can I prevent the muddy tone? Yes, um, I went back and had a conversation with Elliot about this because um, in his comment he he mixed up which way around they were. He knew what he meant, but we were confused for a moment. So what Elliot's asking is, if you put an overdrive after your fuzz, does it have to have a specific characteristic in order to do what it did? And I think my answer would be yes. Absolutely. It doesn't want to be too gainy. Yeah. Because if it's too gainy, then all that happens, you just get a load of mushy, fuzzy stuff mm -hmm. going into a load of gainy stuff, which can be glorious and wonderful, but you don't get any definition. What the clon does, it doesn't really add any gain in terms of overdrive. It just tweaks it up in terms of EQ, Gives it a nip and, nip, nip and tuck in the bass, bit of uh, upper treble and some mid-range shaping, and that's what makes it sound that really kind of gnarly, aggressive. Yeah, and just puts all that energy back into the mid, the top end. Yes. Um, back to what we were saying before, I have to thank Le Tit. Uh, C GCP. We'd all like to thank Le Tit. <laughs> Le Tit. Uh, GCP. 
Paul Twistleton, Salvador Mosca, and many, many others who said kind things about the show in general. So thank you, guys. Very nice things about your playing specifically. Oh, no, it was all it's about the okay. show. Dan. It's all right. Shared head. Uh, cheers, guys. Amuse me that the Echo Fix got its own seat. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Where else are we going to put it? Well, it's back there at the moment. Yeah. But can't reach it back there. No. Um, Jocelyn Viot and Zach Kinian. Uh, like the bit of Philip Sace alchemy I played at 2135. Um, I should have said that that was from Philip Sace, that little bit there. Right. The nice progression that goes um, like C minor, D minor, no, C major, D major, E minor, maybe. That will work. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, alchemy. If you uh, check out Philip Sace's track Alchemy, it's just the alchemy. most beautiful. Be Keep the hell away. Not that one. Away from me. I can't bring it to mind. It's gravity. Ah! Oh! Stay in the oh, it Could have been. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> you always think the solo. You always think that bit of that solo is. Um, it could happen to you. <laughs> that bit. Yeah. It can happen to me. It's great. Sorry. But we're, we're down a rabbit hole already, talking about John Mayer's gravity. That's what that was. Uh, Anthony Dratnell. Everyone says fuzz face doesn't sound as good with humbuckers, but I humbly disagree. A nice path running into a crank Germanian fuzz face will get you square into Neil Young melting tweed deluxe territory. Quite a lot of people said that because mm -hmm. we, we managed to not play any humbuckers during the show, which is a terrible omission. Um, we will do a show on humbuckers and fuzzes. Yeah. Definitely. Because that's a whole thing, isn't it? It is a whole thing. Yeah. For anyone just joining us, uh, we won't, we're not answering anything on there at the moment. Um, or by on there, I mean your comments uh, live. We're just going through the comments from the video on Friday, so bear with us yeah. for another... And don't, so don't do Super Chat just yet. We're going to get to all that in just a minute. Um, Anthony Dratnell. Anthony Dratnell. Everyone says a fuzz face. We've just had that one. Just had that one. Awesome. In which case, we'll move on to Ian Powell. Um, you brought up Ernie Isley. We did. We mentioned Ernie Isley. Um, could you demystify the fuzz and phaser combination? I know that seems uh, to be a lot of Ernie's sound for solos that he played on. Um, both effects are ones I'm trying to wrap around my head. Uh, I love those classic colours. Anyway, what was Ernie Isley's fuzz and phaser combination? Do you know, Dan? Uh, it was either Phase 90 or a Maestro. There you go. It was a Maestro. There you go. You know why it was a maestro? Because of all that blinking top end in it. Mm. Uh, and where is she? Back wall? Here she is. Actually, it wasn't this one. It was a triangle one. Right, okay. Uh, by all accounts, it was triangle big muff, i.e. not this one. Um, and uh, and uh, maestro phaser. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that firsthand from an interview that uh, Ernie did with Guitarist Magazine. No phaser sounds like this. It's just, it's got the cr this crazy amount of fidelity and it makes complete sense when you when you hear that yeah. in context. So do you reckon the phaser was after the fuzz then? To get that massive... Yeah, quite quite possibly. Yeah, yeah. But we'll, uh, we'll have a play. We should do that, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. And of course he was uh, mates with Jimi Hendrix, wasn't he? Cause, was he? Yeah, Jimi, um, I think, played with the Isley Brothers or early days. Yeah, did, pretty sure yeah, he did. Yeah, right. There's a picture of him um, rocking a jazz master in some video that I saw. Wow. If, if I'm remembering correctly. So yeah, that was the Ernie Isley uh, question. Murray in Arizona. What are the notable classic transistors this neophyte should be looking for on eBay, etc., for classic designs besides the NKT275? Uh, if you've got a bunch of old Mullard transistors, the OC75, uh, you've got the... Um, that's a silicon um, BC uh, BC 108s, BC 109s, BC 183s. It's really misleading, isn't it? Yeah. Because I think a lot of chat happens about what do these transistors sound like, and it depends entirely on the rest of the circuit. Of course. A lot of people were commenting on how well the the silicon Hendrix fuzz face cleaned up because. Mm. The word is that germanium cleans up better than silicon, and I've never heard of fuzz that cleans up as well as that yeah, one. So it's incredible. it's really hard to say. Analog Mike Piera's website is a really good place to go and read about transistors for uh, classic fuzz faces. Yep. 
loads of great information there at analogman.com. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Uh, Matt Scott, great video. Thanks, Matt. I have a Fallout cloud in my G G2's loop one, and I'm getting a sun face eventually. Can I put both fuzzes in one loop, or will the impedance monsters be angry? No, that's fine. Um, obviously, you'd need a way to switch them or have them both on. Mm. Uh, but yeah, no problem having them in one loop. There's, the impedances of those ones are fine. I guess uh, you'd, you'd, you'd probably put the sun face first. That's what I was going to say. And then, yeah, because the the impedance on the Fallout cloud is a lot friendlier. Was uh, was the fuzz face in a G two loop, Dan? Yes. Props to G two then. So one of the things about a fuzz is that it really, really, really wants to see your guitar. Mm. So the analog, the Dunlop. Hendrix fuzz face that I was getting all that amazing cleanup off was in one of G2's loops. <laughs> Doff of the cap to you, sir. Oh, oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> actually, that was a salute. Well, actually, well, actually, well, actually. Ah. Yeah. Right, Brad Ruffel, a basement dudge and hang tight 87, the MXR Classic 108 M173 fuzz. Uh, no, sorry, this is my fault, Dan. Okay. I, I've, I've led you up a garden path here. Martin Hurold. H J E R R L I D, Shjurlid, says, Are there any fuzz face style pedals that are more pedal board friendly than the old big fuzzes, uh, than the Epic Jimmy one? And that was also Brad Ruffell, oh, sorry, Dutch, okay. and Hang Tight 87. Lots of people asked this question. What if you want this sound, but it's too much for your pedal board? You know the funny thing? That. It's as big that as a face. It is as big as a face. Well, that particular fuzz <laughs> has a character about it that is quite unique. Very unique. And, but they're all different. You yeah. get ten fuzzes together, and you try them all out, and yeah. you'll find a favourite in that in that ten. When we were over at Mike's, we got a bunch of those fuzzes together. Um, that's actually there's a really good show we did with Analog Man, looking at his fuzzes, and you you'll hear a bunch of them there. And we played so many fuzzes that day, and I found. The one that worked for me, and I just yeah. went, and I just wouldn't let it go. Yeah, literally, you know. Yeah, walking out the shop, well, how, trying to carry bags and stuff. How long does Mike spend face? testing transistors? Oh, it's, it's unreal. It's so unreal. you get a bunch of transistors, and he tests every one, then rates them for gain and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, yep. And some other electrical properties. So don't forget, the fuzz face circuit is really simple, right? And like incredibly simple, like seven or eight, seven components. And the fewer components there are on the board, the more important each one of those components is. Yeah, Josh Scott said that, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it stands to reason. So you're going to have... Josh Scott, <coughs> Philip Sace, <coughs> John Mayer, <coughs> Analog Mike. <coughs> Who else have we mentioned? Ernie Isley. I can't honk Ernie Isley, unfortunately. You, didn't, you interviewed him, didn't you? No, no, no. It was in the magazine I was editing. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. Um, so to answer your question, can you get smaller ones? Yes, you yes, can. Yes, yes. Any of the Analog Man Sunface is a really good place to start. Um, MXR, actually, who um, is the same company as Jim Dunlop, same people own that business, um, do something called the MXR Classic 108 M173 Fuzz, which is the same colour of that as that in a small box. The only thing is... Is it like this? No, it's not like that. Oh, but wouldn't that be good? So the question is, does this one sound like that? Not really. No. Um, it's doesn't. completely different. It's all on a circuit board. Doesn't react off the volume control the same way. They do sound good. They, they get some great sounds out of them, but it's a very, very different thing for anyone not sure about the big and mini fuzz faces. But it's so cute! Yeah, they're cool, but they don't sound the same. Um, and similarly with the M173 Classic 108 Fuzz from MXR, it also has true bypass, a buffer switch, an LED. And when you start adding all that stuff, it doesn't sound the same anymore. Mm. But I I do like that 108 fuzz. It's, yeah. it's a cool it's a cool thing. Mm -hmm. um, Toby Tobson, or Tobson. I have a question for Thing Four. Thing Four was understand how it works with your amp, I believe. Right. Um, does it make a difference how powerful the clean amp is? In uh, if, for example, you would set a Blues Junior or AC15, both relatively low power in comparison to the Plexi. Um, if you set it clean and then hit it with a fuzz, fuzz, would it still be harsh sounding? Is this a dumb question? No. No. It's no the dumb question. Yeah, of fuzz. course. What do you think, Dan? Well, if you set it clean, it will react the same way a clean amplifier will. You'll just—it's just, just going to be quieter than 
the Plex, the, the 50 watt Marshall set clean. Um, but yeah, so as soon as you start getting that to a reasonable volume, it's going to compress more. Exactly the same with any other amplifier. It's just a matter of headroom. What you never hear is how much the amp over, is overdriving when you hit it with the fuzz. Yeah, so you right. never get to hear that, right? Because it's all covered in fuzz. But the way Dan and I both tend to like our amps is they are clean and they are dynamic and responsive and they have headroom. But actually when you hit it with an overdrive or a fuzz, it probably is starting to overdrive a bit. Yeah. Especially when you hit it with that much fuzz and bottom end and mm -hmm. stuff. Definitely. So if you were to put it, oh, I saw a great picture on Instagram today. Um, who posted it? SBE, I think. Uh, Stevie Ray right. stood there. He's got his Dumble Steel String Singer, what I assume is a Marshall Major, because those are the ones he liked. The 200 watt ones? Yeah. And two Dumble EV loaded 4x12 cabinets. <laughs> Can you imagine? And his Vibratone, Fender Vibratone. Can you. That would knock you over, wouldn't it? Yeah, it, that'd cause you physical damage. If you get your ears, it'd just be, you know, you'd... 200 watts of Marshall Major, 150 watts of Dumble Steel String Singer, and 800 watts times two of EV loaded 4x12 cabs. So there's the, the speakers are not compressing at all. They're... Bosh. Man alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, sorry, we're talking about clean headroom. If you put your first face into that, my goodness me... Most of us tend to put it into amps that are on the edge. And whether that is the Blues Junior or the AC15 that you were talking about, those amps are going to break up much quicker and probably give you a bit of a sweeter result, actually. Yeah, yeah. Hendrix's amps were cranked and yeah. rocking. Yeah. Right. Johnny Frude says, Hi, guys. I got really excited about this show because I really struggle integrating my fuzz tone. When I play by myself, I enjoy it. Uh... But as soon as the band kicks in, I get lost. I use a mini fuzz face, silicon, and uh, have always been frustrated with it. As soon as I heard Mick playing the fuzz face through the Rara, which is the Klon, uh, I raced to my studio space and tried to recreate mixed tone. Not even close. Rolling off the volume, no change. My preferred, gar my preferred guitars are low output humbuckers and P90s. I don't really like the thinness of strats, which we'll get into later, except for Mix 61, SRV, and Jimmy, uh, most strat sounds leave me cold. Told yeah. you, loads of people, like, it's, I'm the same. Um, am I wasting my time with fuzz trying to use humbuckers and P90s? Thanks, guys. Right, Johnny. So what Johnny's saying is he was trying to recreate that sound by putting the fuzz face and overdrive after it, and then the guitar making it go from crazy, crazy fuzzy to really, really spanking sparkly clean. Mm -hmm. um, two potential issues, Johnny. One is if your humbuckers are really powerful or your P90s are really powerful, um, treble bleeds, other wiring modifications, um, logarithmic volume control instead of an audio taper one, all those things can really affect how the guitar rolls off. Mm -hmm. So in a Strat, for example, it's an audio taper, 250k pot, and when you go from 10 to 9, you lose a massive amount of signal there. So that's one thing. Could be something to do with the guitar's electronics. But, you know, P90s and uh, humbuckers will do it. If you listen to Joey Landreth, yeah. he goes from roaring fuzz to almost acoustic guitar-like on that on his Sorokin. What's on that? Just on the volume control, P90s. Right. But he's probably down to like two or three. Okay. It, you have to roll it down a bit further to do that. The other thing, as we previously discussed, um, these don't clean up in the same way the, the big one does. Uh, they just don't. So I don't know whether that's something to do with the input impedance or mm. what it is. I've... Yeah, so if you're using humbuckers, definitely um, lean towards the lower output, you know, sort of early PAF style humbuckers sound really good. Um, the higher the, the output... Uh, of the pickup is the harder it is to get that lovely interaction. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, I could swap that fuzz face out for some of the other 
fuzz face type pedals that I've got, and they don't do it anywhere near as, that, as well as that one. Right. So, that, as we said before, they are all different. Yeah. Which is why people who are properly into fuzz. Oh yeah. Have got endless fuzz pedals. Of course. It's, yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm only semi into into fuzz. So. What's the name of someone who's into who you knows fine wine? A sommelier, <laughs> right? A sommelier. A sommelier. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like it's like that with fuzz. A fuzzelier. A fuzzelier. Yeah. <laughs> Someone, come on, come up with a, come up with a term for it that doesn't include o file. Um, Sunil Yappa, hello Sunil, great show guys, thank you. Um, I love Simon's shouted commentary. Yeah, Simon keeps us on track. He's, he does. Um, actually, on the subject of which, Fraser, if you want to hit, you're more than welcome. What's he going to do? It's, oh, he's off. It's way past home time. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want to keep you from your life. Everyone say bye to Fraser. Bye, Fraser. <laughs> Fraser uh, does the audio for our shows, and if you've wondered why the show sounds so good recently, it's largely down to Fraser. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good boy. <laughs> Cheers, mate. See Have you a bad. nice evening. Um, so if it goes off, please tell us. Um, uh, yes, I love germanium based fuzzes with a bias control, says mm -hmm. Sunil Yapa, mm -hmm. particularly the Zvex Fuzz Factory. Mm. Basic audio by bias, but I find in some locations they make a horrible, unusable howling sound like a herd of robot cats stuck in a trash compactor being launched to Mars. Just like that. Yeah, please don't send cats to Mars. Um, physical locations is what triggers it, not board locations i.e. where the pedals are on the board. Is this some sort of radio frequency interference? Is it mains? I could never figure it out, no matter what I did. In my old house, it was a problem. In my new house, it works just fine. So he's saying, depending on where he is in the house, mm. or indeed out and about, the fuzzes can make a horrible noise. So one thing with, with fuzz, I mean, with overdrive pedals in, in general, but fuzz, because there's so much gain in there, and that's what's causing the, the clipping of the signal, it can react like an antenna. Um, it's, you know, it's just looking for something to amplify. And if you've got dirty powers, and if you're not powering it, if, if it's not isolated when you're powering it, it will take any noise it can find. If you're in a, in a room with a dimmer switch, um, it can pick up the sound of the, the transformers in the dimmer switch and, and create horrible noises. Really? Yeah, and you can, if you've got fluorescent lights, for well, example. there we go. Maybe, yeah. maybe dimmer switches are an issue. Yeah. They're also um, temperature sensitive, germanium yeah. transistors. But you can sometimes with it you can with the you can play tunes with your dimmer switch through your fuzz face. Okay, it's great. So it probably is an RF. Might be. Might, well, it, it it depends on. Um, do you, I remember when I was a kid, if you had a dimmer switch in your house, that would mean they were expensive. They're really good, <laughs> right? But now they're so cheap because the transformers and stuff they use is basically garbage. But right. it does it does the job as far as you know lighting is concerned. Yeah. But. Um, they're so noisy. They put they pump so much garbage into you know the atmosphere, um, and your fuzz face can pick up on that. Ah, now it's streaming good. It says. Does it? We've gone from bad to good. Have we? We have. See? Oh yeah. Why can't we see it then? Why is that? Do you think? Do I have to press I, this to get the public view? Well, maybe. But uh, I'm just interested. What sort, of, what sort of framing we have? Okay. Oh, it's not too bad. All right. Yeah. Good job. Happy days. Um. Producer man 100 and 1030. Producer man 1030. I'm friends with Elliot Randall, he says. The guitar player that played the solo on Reeling in the Years. <laughs> I would have loved it if the comment had just ended there. <laughs> I'm friends with Elliot Randall. Actually, Elliot Bye. Randall. I think we can both want Elliot Randall, can't we, Dan? I can't. Oh, really? No. Didn't you set up an amp for him once? Oh, no, that was somebody else. Yeah, PV not Juice. You set up a PV Deuce for somebody once. Oh no, no, that was um, that was um, uh, Randy Backman. Ah, Randy Randall, Randy Randall. I, I see where you got confused there. Yeah, um, I'm friends with Elliot Randall, says producer man 1030, the guitar player that played the solo on Reeling in the Years. He says he played that solo through an Ampeg SVT using the onboard distortion. That's what he told me. He had a strap with a humbucker in the neck position. Nice. Yes, I've heard that story before. Very well. good. Yeah. We we had suggested that it might have been a direct to board tone, but actually it wasn't. Right. Revolution by the Beatles is, the, is your direct to board tone. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, Jeremiah McCann. Um, 
Can you describe how germanium and silicon clean up differently? Also, an octave fuzz episode would be divine. What we said earlier, and it really it's just about it's, it's not it's not inherent in the nature of the transistors. Um, silicon tends to be more stable. Um, it just depends on how they're biased, and yeah, the silicon cleans up just fine. Yeah, people say it does. People say silicon's more aggressive than germanium's woollier, but it just it depends whatever else happens in yeah, the circuit, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, El Rondo says, El here. Hello, El. Patience, my pet. Oh, yeah. What are we going to eat tonight, Dan, do you think? What, what do you fancy? Mm. Well, I'm, I'm off the vegan thing. Yes. Well and truly yep. off that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy to eat something with lots of... What do you fancy? Something that once had a name. <laughs> David. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'm not, sure, not sure how we're going to come back from that. Here's Carol, my carrot. Anyway, um, question says El Rondo. Will you test that little Bugera T5 you unboxed on the show? After that, I got one used for 80 euros, and it's a great and versatile amp for home volume use. Yeah, yeah we should. Absolutely well. We totally should. It's this little thing here. I'm gonna, one day, I'm going to break the horn for good. Break the horn. Break the horn for good. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we make the bugger a gag as well, again? This is the bugger T5 Infinium. What's that? One 12AX7 and one EL84, is it? Right, so it's a single ended, is it? One power valve. Looks like it. Okay. Cool! Yeah. Oh, yeah, EL84 12AX7A. Nice! Yes, we will Magic. do that. Why yeah, not? we will. We will. Imagine how many of those you could get in a container from China. Can you do the long one? Yes. Thank you. Uh, 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 hog pilot. <laughs> Ah, hog pilot. Ah, hog pilot one. <laughs> Says. Sorry, YouTube names are really odd sometimes. Hey guys, first, thanks for all the great info the show brings us. Question, I'm using Dan's gig rig power system with distributors, isolators, along with the Quartermaster 8. Great system. Yes, it is. But I have an issue with gain stacking. My pedal order is Tumnus. God. Uh, I'm just trying to take all this in. Uh, a Tumnus Fuzz Face, a Love Pedal Super 6 with a Stevie Mod and an OCD. Mm -hmm. If I stack any two pedals together except the Tumnus, uh, all is good. The Tumnus by itself, all good with no excess noise. So everything's mm -hmm. good so far. But if I stack any two or more pedals together with the Tumnus, I get an excessive level of background noise. Uh, rhyme running wet dry, uh, AB baby for the split. Most of the noise appears to be coming from the fender. Any ideas? So we're saying any two pedals stacked together is fine. Yep, except the tumnus. Except if you stack two and the tumnus, that's a power issue, isn't it? Oh, probably a power issue. I mean, if you're stacking any pedals and it's fine, except the tumnus, it might be an issue with the tumnus. It might have a problem. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, yeah. If you, yeah, if you contact us um, through Gigrig, we'll do a FaceTime session and look at that for you. Work it but out. But it, so it sounds to me like I don't, I, was there, was the Tums Deluxe, I think, they did a couple of versions of, because there's some other things. Anyway, um, yeah, could be yeah, a few yeah, things. I'm, people often comment, you know, how guys, you, how come you guys don't get loads of uh, extraneous noise when you're gain stacking and the rest of it? Because, um, A, the signal routing is really clean. B, when we're not playing, we turn them off. Mm. So if they were all turned on, they'd be hissing like... Yeah. And if you listen to that, if you heard the fuzz face and the Ryra together into the Marshall, it would have been a wall of white noise. But you just can't hear it when, the, when it's all loud. Mm. So when you're not playing, obviously, turn them off. Yeah, yeah. But it might not be that... Mm, soon, soon. <laughs> right, Philip Spectral. Hi, gentlemen. A question for Dan, as Mick is not allowed to talk about Telecasters on his channel. 
Um, what are your thoughts on Telecaster Custom? Can't remember seeing one on the show and I'm watching since Gigwood days. Uh, custom, is that the humbucker in the neck? Not to be fused with, not to be confused with custom Telecaster. Right, which, which is, is a double bound body version of. Oh Rose. yes, right, yeah. 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 Telecaster Custom is uh, Keith Richards made it famous, I believe. I'm, my, I'm all about the neck pickup and the telly. Yeah. I'm all about that world. Um, Have you ever watched RuPaul's Drag Race? Sorry, you were just a bit camp there. <laughs> It is exceptional TV. I haven't. It's really, I, I'd recommend... But now Ru that I'm, I, you know, I I'm bringing him to mind. I totally your... recommend RuPaul's Drag Race to anyone out there in the world. It's really great telly. That does give me an idea for a show. Awesome. Anyway, sorry. You're all about the neck pickup. Um, neck pickup on the telly is one of my favourite sounds. Uh, I... I've played a couple. I've played a couple of really good ones too. If you've got, oh, what's the? Uh, now this is probably isn't the one in the in the custom, but in the. Are you thinking of the wide uh, the, range humbuckers? Well, the thin line that has the Seth line. Lover. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Those, those, I mean, to me, they're some of the best sounding humbuckers I've ever heard. Yeah. But they're not the ones that are in the deluxe. The I custom. Think, in the custom, sorry. Um, yeah, there's. Yeah, they work for some people. Wasn't um, uh, Andy Summers' guitar was a his telly was a custom? It had a humbucker in the neck. Uh, yeah, see now his to me looked like a custom Telecaster with a humbucker in the neck. Right. Yeah. It was a double bound sunburst. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. I, for me, you go from that lovely, bright, sparkly, jangly, brush aggressive bridge pickup to. Wooliness. So like, yeah, that and that's the thing that I. Yeah, but yeah, I, I mean, Keith buy. made it work, blimey. Can't did he though? Did him. he ever use that? Uh, I don't know. Has he ever used anything except the bridge pickup on his Telecaster? I don't know. Yeah. Sometimes he doesn't even have all the strings on. And look how famous he is. Imagine that. <laughs> okay, let's open it to the floor. So yes, super chat is now on. Super chat's on. Well, it's always been on, but anyway, so let's pick it up then. Corb Corbin, hello, Corb Corbin. Um. Says soul are the electro harmonic soul food maybe the most value for your buck outside a tube screamer. Yeah, a bit dark sounding for me. I bought one for Dave Gregory for Christmas a few years ago. Yeah, and uh, he loves it. Nice. Zach at Myth Pedals says uh, Mythos Pedal says holler. Uh, holler. Zach's coming to the UK and um, oh is he? Yes, and he's going to come in and we're going to do a show. Awesome. We haven't quite tied the date down yet, but the Argo was representing in spectacular fashion in the show on Friday. Um, Otto Eklund says Johnny Greenwood's telly's a custom, isn't it? Uh, Johnny Greenwood's telly isn't. No, it's got a humbucker in the bridge. Uh, I've I didn't play that guitar, but I did handle it. Joe Brennan, hi Joe. Uh, question for Dan: Does Gig Rig have any power solutions for powering a Victory V4 pedal preamp? Oh, that's a massive AC thing, isn't it? Twelve volts, one amp. Um, not currently. That's a that's a big thing. Yeah, so yeah, it, they do come with them, but um, yeah, that's a lot of power. Yeah. It does have to 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 um. Without, what am I saying? Uh, in Victory's corner, it's got four full voltage valves it's in it. It's a proper yeah. proper amp. It's not like a thing. sort of exactly it's pretend not mini half of mini yeah, tube yeah, yeah. running it. Yeah. 20 volts or whatever. Uh, Matthew Denby. Hi, Matthew. Thank you very much. He says, please, 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 please let me get what I want, which is Johnny Marr on that pedal show. Would be so good to have Johnny on. He is, Johnny is such a <coughs> brilliant human. That's balls in your court for that. You have to let you get, get yeah. your people to talk to his people. Okay. John, he's such a nice guy. I've never met him. I'd love to oh, meet me him. Me and Simon did some filming with him back along and he, what a dude. So passionate about the guitar, so passionate about sound, so passionate about music. Very you just put him in your bag and take him very, Yeah, I should have done. Very awe inspiring. Um, uh, right, who else have we got here then? Um, Comic J. Cosmic J. My SG backs off nicely into a first face. Nice. Um, as long as the first face is cranked. Now that ah, is really interesting, yes. Cosmic. And we haven't said that. We haven't said that. 
in order for the the fuzz face to do what it does, it's got to be on nine and nine, and that's when it works. And most people think, <gasps> how could I possibly set it like that? Mm. Philip Sace told me that actually. He says you've got to turn the controls to ten, and then turn them back until the sound of frying bacon disappears. Right was his exact quote. <laughs> uh, right. Caleb at Matthew's Guitar Works. Mick, you should seriously try a 50s mod on your Strat. It'll do that clean roll-off thing with any amp and pedal combo. Thanks, Caleb, but I don't want it to do it with any amp and pedal combo. I only want it to do it with the first face in the way that it does it. Right. What I want normally, if I'm using a Tube Screamer or an OCD or uh, whatever else, I want it to go a bit darker and very mm. much quieter so that when she's singing and then down... Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, just, nice. yeah, no problem. Okay. I watched an awesome documentary on Taylor Swift last night. Did you? Yeah. Very good. What was good about it? Um, as you know, I'm a big Taylor Swift fan. Yeah. And I like her music very much indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, but it just gave a very in interesting insight into her, her personality. Okay. Yeah, I'd always assumed... Can you classify that? Well, I'd always assumed that she might be one thing and she's actually something very different. Oh, is she? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, I think she gets home and zip down the back of a bodysuit, and this little dude pops out, and <laughs> not that different. <laughs> Have hey, you seen? Did you see I'm working in here, Zach? That's very kind of you. you oh, Zach! You thank didn't you, mate. Need to do that at all, but that's thank very you. Kind. Thank, thank you. you. We'll see you in a few weeks. Um, yeah. Sorry. Why are we talking about Taylor Swift? Um, I'm yakking. Yeah. Have you seen the couple karaoke with Billie Eilish? No, I haven't. Oh, man. It's the best thing ever. She's so great. Okay, I will watch that. Uh, Rob Flax, hi, Rob. Thoughts on octave fuzzes? Do you like any of them that have a switchable octave? Uh, my current favourite is the Mythos Argo, which is uh, inspired by the Prescription Electronics Cobb. Mm. And that's my favourite because it's Doyle Bramall's favourite. Okay. You, Dan? Um, my favourite's the Johnny Octave. Oh, nice. Yeah, I from love Zivex. that. From Zivex. Yeah. That's and your awesome. old Shine sounds amazing, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's different. It's a different, it, you know, if you're talking about a, you can't switch the the octave off on that thing. It's just, it's a different take on that fuzz sound that has so much, you know, harmonics up there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my favourite one before the Argo was the... Uh, Full tone octafuzz, which you can get in a similar place to it. That's it's awesome. really cool. More Ginny, that one actually. Yeah, right. You get closer to the classic Hendrix thing mm. than you will with the Argo. Um, somebody, I've got some bad news for. Uh, come on, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? You were here. You were here. Somebody has just said that Mick Strat vlog ate my homework, and he's just <laughs> bought a Callahan Bridge. Uh, for his strat. Right. I'm sorry I can't find you in the list. Um, the bad news is I've just taken the Callahan Bridge out. Right. And in has gone the Mark Foley Bridge. Oh, cool. By the way, the strat vlog might go up tomorrow. Right. It's got new pickups in it. It has new pickups in it. Right. Stage one complete. And it's Fascinating really, stuff. Really, really interesting. Mm. Um, Master Machetier. Ooh. Go on there. No, I know. Have you seen the film Machete? With um, <laughs> he, there's this great interview with him, uh, the, and it was the first time that he met, um, what's that? This really famous uh, Latin actress, um, Salma Hayek. Salma Hayek. Wow, that wasn't bad. That yeah, and he met and so because he's got a really interesting past, right? right? And Salma Hayek was doing this film with him. And she, she introduced herself and he rips over his chest and got this massive tattoo of her. No. <laughs> on his chest. And apparently it wasn't her. Like, he didn't do it, but it was someone, it was it was her. It looks exactly like her. <sighs> Freaked her out. No way. Yeah. When we win the Grammy for uh, best guitar. Best tangent. Best YouTube pedal tangent. based YouTube show made in Froom. <laughs> okay. Um, I want that to happen. I want some angry looking dude to come up, rip open his chest and have tattoos of me and you. One here, one here, do, do this thing. <laughs> McDan, 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 McDan. 
That's proper scary. Anyway, Master Machetier says, uh, thoughts on Reverend guitars? I'm looking at a Jetstream 390 to complement my Strat. Solid, great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Greg Cox signature really good. T-Star was really good, wasn't it? The, there's a really cool uh, um, Reeves Gabrell. His guitar is really, really cool. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Uh, I don't know. It's, a, yeah. it's, it's like a Nighthawk looking double cutaway thing. Yeah, it's awesome. One of the things I like about the, some of the earlier Reverend guitars I played, they have this kind of bass roll off. Oh, yeah. Pot, which if it's all getting a bit woolly, you can just take out some of the bottom end, mm, which was like quite cool, I thought. Um, right. Uh, Matt Presley. Hi, Matt. Do you guys know about Moen? My favourite chorus ever is their Holy Choir, and I can't find what it's based on, or if it's original. Moen, M-O-E-N pedals. Do you know about those? Mm-hmm. Do you? Mm -hmm. What are they, then? Um, they're a, another uh, Chinese manufacturer. I think they do a lot another... Um, I think I'm right in saying that. Moen pedals? Yeah. It's not... It's not Mua, it's Moen. Oh, I, th I think they're. I've I've seen yeah I have seen their stuff. Um, I think they do clones. Okay, let us know, Moen. Yeah, I'll have to have let a look. us know. Um, the Holy Moly says, "Is Taylor more germanium than silicon?" No, my two favourite fuzzes are both silicon. Right. Um, my the big box Jimi Hendrix one and my Analog Man BC one eight three. He wasn't asking about Taylor Swift. Oh yeah. <laughs> She probably is. Right. Yeah. Um, Blue Breaker. Hello, Blue Breaker. Do you guys have a video review of the throwback Fuzz Haze? We don't, but we did do the Stone Bender, I think it was called, mm. a while back. I've had a couple of their things. They were great. Their, their treble booster was awesome. They make really nice pickups, mm. too. Yeah, uh, right. Matt Miller. Hello, Matt. How would you compare the sound of Victory V40 The Duchess compared to a Morgan PR12? Um, very, very different. Duchess is rounder, warmer, uh, less aggressive. PR12 is bright, aggressive. Right, wow. And I, it sounds like I'm saying that that is a bad thing. It's not. PR12 is one of my favourite amps. He's, he's very clever. And magic oh, Joe. small amp, that is. Yeah. V40 is much safer than a PR12, I would say. Mm. Rounder, softer. I might hazard to say easier to play. Okay. Um, but yeah, they're quite different. You know, one's either 6L6s or EL34s, but kind of traditional. Sounds more like a bigger amp to me. Right. Might even be slightly more blackface in the in the basic EQ, even though it's not a massively trebly amp. Whereas the PR12 is Princeton derived, right? So much more, to use a technical term. Uh, John Lorenz, get Taylor Swift on. Oh, Can you good, imagine how good would that be? Tell you what was <laughs> mad though. We were, she was doing songwriting, and uh, she was sat there at the piano with a clown. Yeah, <laughs> the clown and a fuzz bass. And uh, some of those massive songs, some of those huge hits. Mm -hmm. And she's just playing a chord on the piano, and I'm saying to my wife, it's just blooming C, G, and F, that. It's cowboy chords. Yeah. And then you add crazy producer, and they become these mega hits. She got a rake from the garden. She cut out a couple <laughs> of tongs in space and just starts going... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just shows the... Show. You know, I'm wrong with you, you never got to be alone. I love you, you forget... <laughs> uh, um, Bar One weren't the first Telecaster customs from the 60s the same as the rest with the exception of a double bound body uh, yeah that was a custom Telecaster not, not a, a Telecaster custom. custom confusing I know um, you should use the Big Muff OD on the show it's the Smashing Pumpkins one says Joris Raz Big Muff OD have okay. you got that? Uh, We've got a bunch of Big Muff variants out there. We should okay. we should do. Uh, Jarrett Oldenburg. You mentioned that you have to self-mix when playing live. 
I'm trying to control my bands, my board's volume, even when my guitar is rolled off for cleans. It's not working very well. Any tips? Even worse with stack gains. Yes. Volume this pedal is, at the end. This is the age old problem of you turn up to one gig and nothing's loud enough, and you turn up to the next one and everything is like in 3D, crazy loud. I've never been able to understand why that works. Room, maybe? Room. Room is massive, man. Yeah, Room has such yeah. a. Remember when we first started filming in here and it was like, oh, okay. It's really dead and stuff. And then we put those two acoustic panels at the end and it changed everything. Yeah. You And you do a sound check. You put 100 people in the room, everything is different. Yeah. Everything is different. It's also, I think, about having the confidence to, to be as loud as you need to be. Yeah, that's a big thing. And... You're so scared to offend anyone by playing loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What was it? Um, that, there's a... Dan's done a great interview with Adam Neely, the uh, bass player who has a massive YouTube channel. And Adam said something really fascinating in that. He said he he was told by a teacher to change his question from not may I, not may I yeah, but, to what if. Yeah. And I thought that was really interesting. So, so if good. you're struggling with volume, you're always there going, uh, sorry, 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 it's a bit loud, sorry. But actually you just play the part and it's at the volume it needs to be and... I don't know. Then everyone tells you to turn down. Is uh, we feel your pain? Definitely. Yeah. If a volume pedal can be a really good thing, if you want to uh, control the overall volume of of not the not the dynamic relationship between the guitar and the pedal board, but the overall volume, stick a volume pedal um, at the end of the board or before your delays and reverbs, and it'll act as a master volume. That's a fantastic thing to do. Um, you know, as soon as the manager of the bar walks past, just, hey, yeah, yeah, man. You know, bring it down a bit, and then you can sort of lean into it. They're, yeah, really good. Um, I had a question here, and it's disappeared. I don't know how this works, Dan. I thought I was doing it quite well last week, and now it's just completely gone weird. Um, Hodding's Guitar, Hod Hodney's Guitar says, just felt the same need to say thanks for the past years. I've been watching TPS since day one. I learned a lot from your playing by the way i finally got my hands on a g2 thank you hod niz guitar oh thank that's you. awesome mate yeah you're um, so welcome there was a question about um oh, i don't know maybe we'll find it again sorry it moves too quickly um jarrett oldenburg mick any thoughts on the jimmy vaughan strat wiring i.e middle pickup with no tone control and the bridge on tone two that makes so much sense to me mm. Mm. Because you free the middle pickup up from the pot loading, so it's bright, spanky, yeah. and you take away some of that bright, spanky thinness from mm -hmm. the... I mean, that's how I do it on on my guitars generally. Did, when you put the pickups in blue, did you put the tone on a, on a bridge pickup? No, or I've, left it off? I've kept it off Okay, keeping it, for the time being, just to keeping do it real. so apples aren't apples, but yeah. I think I will put it on at right, some point. Okay. I will do that Jimmy Vaughan mod, because okay. that makes a lot of sense to me. I like it. If you get the scene out, all right, here's the rabbit hole. If you use a 0.022 cap, mm. when you roll the treble, if you put, the, put an 022 cap on a 250k pot on a strap bridge pickup, when you roll it down to about eight or seven, it rolls off just enough of the top end to make the strap pickup stop sounding ugly. And if with a bit of mid gain, you're sort of two steps towards a humbucker. Yeah, but keep, still keeping attack in there. And it can it's sound just, thick. Yeah, 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 yeah. The problem is, strap should have an 047 cap and actually should have it's a point one. bigger. Point, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the, the original spec was point, point one, one, so the, the sunburst one will have a point one. Nee, nee, nee. Exactly. Like a... Like a like a dub remix. And, <laughs> and all, all the people I know who I trust say that it really matters. Yeah, right. And once you start putting the, the lower valley caps in, the th that everything changes and don't even get into cap material. You know, Simon Jarrett, who knows, says it doesn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. Other people I know say it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. So it's a bit of a bit of a trade-off, which is why you can never have one strat right. So you want one that's all spanky and vintagey and bright and like, ah, for that. And then you want one where you can just roll it off a bit. And, mm. and that's what I'm going to end up with, with blue and black and, uh, well, blue and transit van and John Mayer, I think. Three very different tools. Right. Even though they look the same-ish. Um, sorry, I'm yakking. 
the first phrase from Jam Pedals is amazing first, says In Spirito Victory. Uh, they use a CV7003 germanium. Right. Uh, Mike's a big fan of that, isn't he? My yeah. analog man. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Look, what what from what from jam pedals isn't awesome. Though, you know, they make great stuff. The new the new um Retro uh, retro the retro vibe is incredible. Coming up on a pedal jam soon. Guitar for Life says, question for Dan, how would you compare your matchless against your audio kitchen? Seems like you like the matchless more. The I've been playing the Audio Kitchen. As a matter of fact, I'm recording with the Audio Kitchen. It's going to be, appear a lot on my EP. Recorded, it's magic. It has more of a... It gets gainier faster. Um, the reverb in it is just spectacular. Oh, like, wonderful. Um, it really has a sound I've never heard in an amplifier before. And in a recording context... It's magic. So it's going to be all over the EP with the Matchless. Um, the Matchless has been my dream app forever. And it's like, you know, it's one of those things. I'm still, every time I plug into it, I still get giddy, you know. But don't get me wrong, I, I, I'm i playing. So the Audio Kitchen is at my uh, spot in Swindon. And I'm playing it all the time and I'm rehearsing with Doug in it, doing the tunes. And it's it's the, it's a magic amplifier. But this is louder. It's, it's, as far as what I need to More throw, aggressive. Yeah, all that stuff for the pedal platform. Uh, the the mashless is... Yeah. I, I, the, the volume in the... Um, as soon as you get past a certain level with the, uh, the big chopper, um, you it starts to... You dig in and it just compresses a bit, yeah. and it's it's awesome. If if you like that, if you like that, but for what for for what the mattress is doing, um, for the pedal platform, you know. But I might do a wet dry thing with the, with both of them, mm. you know, and that that would just be I mean it'd be totally overkill and obscene, but man alive, it's what we're here it's, for, isn't yeah, it? exactly. <laughs> I think so, yeah. But I I love them. I, you know, they're both great ants, But mattress is my dream app. Ian says, hey, I love the show. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Ian. Um, I have a Keeley Monterey. Any idea where I should put it in my signal chain? Because modulation, after drives, fuzz. Uh, what Ian is saying is you've got a multi-pedal that does things that then create you signal chain order problems. Yeah. We, to de before we turn this on, we did a, uh, a pedal jams using the Wampler Terraform. And the Terraform has got a really cool feature in it where you can basically patch an overdrive in before or after certain of the modulations, mm. which is a really cool feature. I don't think the Monterey enables you to do that. No. And I don't think it enables you to switch the order of them either, does it? So you're basically... It's one or the other. It's, yeah. Well, it's, it's... Yeah. You've it's, just got to put it where it makes most sense. Yeah. Um, some people really like their Univibes after overdrive. Most people like it before... If you run into a overdriving amp, it's not so... Because what happens is if you put the Univibe after the overdrive, you get the full sweep of the of the phase in the Univibe, and you get a lot of very sort of harsh top end. What that then needs is another gain stage, really, to sort of yeah. smooth it out a bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, which, of course, is what Hendrix would have done. He'd have had his fuzz face... And then the Univibe would have come at some point after that, and but it was hitting a really overdriving Marshall. Mm -hmm. So, what oh, man alive? Come on, boys, just hungry, relax. Hungry boy, nearly. nearly um, there. So, if you are experiencing problems, you could try another overdrive after the Monterey just to just to even it out. But yeah, yeah, that's that's a good shout. Yep. Um, do 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 do. Come on then, Mister Tony, sound good. Mister Tony sounds good. That's brilliant. Um, big Muff Op Amp is the Pumpkins Muff. I believe you guys played one in an earlier Muff show. Uh, the Op Amp. We, yeah, did we? No, he's got the, uh, there's the so orange many one. Different that ones. Right? Yeah, that's, that's crazy now. See, I've always been... The stuff that... Was it Siamese, Siamese Dream? Where he's using loads of the Fender Blender. Um, those sorts of guitar sounds. And obviously the Big Muff's a big part of it. But for me, the definitive... Um, Billy Corgan sound is one of my favourite Billy Corgan sound is his Fender Blender thing. Yeah, yeah. Which is just magic. Whiny vocals, Fender Blender, mm. pumpkins. 
world is a vampire. It's, I mean, I, I thought they were great. Um, Bullet with Butterfly Wings, just wonderful. <laughs> William Smothers, hi, William. Um, I'm loving my AC15 C1X. Yeah, I awesome. I that great is app. the one with the blue speaker. Um, there's lots of stuff on the web about fuzz difficulties with the Vox amp. Please elaborate or dispel the myth. What fuzz do you use with your Voxes and how, Dan? It depends. So, look, from from watching any of our fuzz shows, you all know that there there's a world of different fuzz sounds. Mm-hmm. It, you can't it's, it's like what overdrive, you know, how do you make overdrive work with your... It's finding the right thing that works not just with the amplifier, that works with you. Guitar, you all, thing, it's yeah. It's part of an ecosystem, you know, and it all works together in this large, homogenous, planetarian of a... Thing. It's a holistic approach, it's, is what you're saying, Dan. It's is just it? all, you know, I like it. It's love, man. It's love. I feel you. Christopher Courtney, I struggle with riding the volume knob for clean tones, but can't keep the volume appropriate. Yeah. It's a really difficult one, that. And it again, and, and, and how do you do it? You got to play loud. Yeah, you do. Uh, and everything that he just said about it being in the ecosystem of. Mm. It is really tough. It's really tough when you're exposed like that. Um, yeah, you know, for all the bravado about, hey, just get a fuzz face and turn it up to 10 into your Marshall, and then you turn up for the gig and everyone thinks you've lost your mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a tricky thing. Uh, yeah. But you but finding a balance of that, because there's magic there. It's worth, it's worth persevering with it. Mm. Um, Jacob Sand, uh, Sandness, Jacob Sandness, question for Mick. Uh, in order to attain the glassy strat tone, do you need a treble bleed? No. Lots of people ask this in the um, comments, actually. From... As a matter of fact, I'd say, I'd say actually the opposite is yeah, true. Yeah, would, would probably harm it. Yeah. Um, no, there's just something about the way that a strat in particular at, reacts with a particular type of vintage fuzz circuit that just does that. If we had Simon Jarrett here, he might be able to explain why that is electronically. The um, I mean, Part of it, those, those circuits are... Uh, uh, current driven, not voltage driven. That has a lot to do with it and the impedance stuff. But it's like Mick's got, I don't know how many strats you've got sat there Five. and they all clean up differently. You yeah. know, so it's the the old strat. I've never heard a strat clean up like that. It's a really it's, spectacular yeah. thing. But now, so, you know, and this cleans up with with stuff as well, but, you know, the guitar, the way that the guitar is doing what it does and the output impedances and all that stuff, and the inductance of the coil, it's all part of that system. See, there you go. I, I teeter on the edge of this cavernous rabbit hole in the strap vlog that's upcoming in the next few days. I measured the new pickups when I put them into mm. the two, the, so DC resistance. for anyone not keeping up, um, I'm putting some Ron Ellis 64s in blue, and I'm putting some Fender Fat 60s in transit van, um, I measured them, and the Ellis ones measure five and a half for the bridge and the neck. Magic. Six and a half for the bridge. The Fender ones measure six point seven across the board. Wow. Pretty much, but the Ellis ones are the post sixty four type Alnico five magnets with enamel coated wire. Right. Previous to that, they were, or previous in the sixties, they were Alnico two with heavy form var coated wire. So if you wind those two pickups the same and get the same DC resistance. They're gonna sound different. Of course they don't sound. Yep, of course. Yeah. And guess which the loudest pickup is out of all of those? The um the Ellis. Yeah, yeah. Well it's actually the old strat, which are probably even lower. <laughs> so DC resistance is just such a minefield for for determining how powerful a guitar is going to be however i think it might be relevant when you turn the volume knob down depending on what that's going into depending on the yeah. circuit that's interfacing with yeah yeah so yeah. if you've got a 13k pickup and you turn the volume down a bit that's very different than having a a weak pickup and turning the volume oh down a yeah, bit. yeah 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 so totally anyway. different christopher mccoy okay so the impossible question if fuzz is a rabbit hole what one pedal do I choose to start the journey? I have mainly filtertrons, but a few single coils in the mix. Oh, that's a really good question. So Christopher wants to get into wants to get into it. 
fuzz and he wants to buy his first fuzz pedal that is really difficult that's so difficult oh, man I would say I for for guys who would like to distortion and were looking at dipping their toe in the world of fuzz let me see if I can find it So the Velvet Fuzz from Wampler would go from distortion into fuzz. Yeah. So you'd find that spot where it was something that you're comfortable with, like what well, more familiar with. Yeah. And then suddenly you're in, in fuzzy territory. So that's like a a really nice easing into that world. Yeah. Um, but uh, it didn't make sense to me until I got my uh, like analog man first analog man. Fuzz face, and then it all sort of worked. One of the things to do, Christopher, might be to think about the music that you like the best that yeah. has fuzzy guitar tones in it. Yeah, that's a good point. And if it's Jimmy, then a fuzz face would be a good place to start. If it's later than that, thicker, um, it might be that that particular player used something like a tone bender, or later still, it might be a muff style, which is really mm. thick and woolly. So mm. you might be able to just narrow it down a bit by. But picking yeah. a guitar tone that you really like and finding out what they use. If you are a massive uh, Zeppelin fan, for example, you'd buy a tone bender and then you'd sit at home trying to work out how he got that sound <laughs> from a tone bender. Yeah. And it's the same as like when you picked up your first fuzz face and plugged it in, did you go, how on earth did Jimmy make this sound the way he did? This is broken. Yeah, exactly. And it wasn't until, I think I was sat down with Philip Sace actually. Wow. <laughs> and he showed me. Right. And he's like, Listen to this, me. and I'm like, oh my god, the the world has just become a very interesting place. Right, uh, Neandra, hello, Neandra, thank you. Hey, Neandra. Uh, um, thoughts on the newish Marshall Origin series? Also, why no orange amps at Marshall T uh, at, at TPS? Um, Marshall Origin series, we haven't. I haven't actually played them. No, we saw them at Nam last yeah. year. Yeah, there's a couple of things that put me off um, based on experience of other amps. But we should hear them before making jumping to those conclusions. Sure. sure. Why no orange amps? Um, we've had a couple of oranges. Da mine and Dan's tastes lie in Fender, Marshall, Matchless, Two Rock, Fox, Fox. Yeah, orange have a really, and you can't be, you can't generalize, right? So, some of the I had I I had a. Um, OTR 120 for years when I had an indie band. Right. With a GNL Ace. It was a blooming glorious guitar sound. Wow. With a 4x12. It was a fantastic guitar sound. But there's something about the way a lot of Orange Amps break up. Okay. For the kind of low to mid gain sounds that Dan and I tend to use that I don't find pleasing. Okay. Once you get on into some of the heavier yeah. genres, right. that yeah. sound is just so banging. So, yeah. It, it, yeah. I. I haven't played an orange amp recently that I really love. Sure, interesting. Yeah, yeah I'm, I mean, I'm. I don't know them well enough. I've played a couple of. I've done some rigs for some guys using the orange amplifiers, and they generally the heavier side yeah. of things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Beautiful just, sounding things. Yeah. We had a um, a thirty watt combo with two tremolo circuit or a switchable tremolo circuit in recently, and right up until the point of overdrive, it was lovely, yeah, really right. big and round and clean and beautiful. But the overdrive just has a flavour that. Um, it really isn't to my personal yeah, yeah. taste. Yep. And I think we should caveat that by saying, you know, the amps that we use day in, day out are not to a lot of people's personal tastes either. It's just a personal preference thing. Is it diplomatic enough, Dan? That's very good. Uh, Samuel Granger, jazz and fuzz. How do I dial in those sax trumpet cello tones <laughs> from the early fuzz ads? Yeah, that's quite interesting, actually. What were they thinking? <laughs> um, yeah. Um, Lord Councillor James, my fuzz is at the front of the chain. If I kick in a boost, uh, Love Pedal Jubilee or Amp Eleven, it drops the sound of the fuzz and changes the tone. Any thoughts? It. What, what do you mean? Drops the sound of the fuzz if the boost. If you've got a really loud fuzz and the boosts can't 
keep up, you know, increase the sound of that, then it will drop. But if your fuzz is just over unity and then you kick in the, you know, the other boost pedals, it should be fine. The, the thing to remember is though, if you're using those as boosts and not as over, hey, not as overdrive pedals, um, because you need to remember that if, if your overdrive pedal is uh, limiting the sound and giving that you know, nice warm edges and you've got the fuzz pedal on, it's really square, really hard edges and then you kick this on, it is going to soften the edges of the fuzz. Yeah, yeah. It just is. If, but that is if you have the overdrive pedal compressing. So when you hear Mick um, do the thing on the, on the show, like number 10, when he kicks the clon on, the clon is just shaping the sound. It's not adding any other uh, limiting to it. You know, it's got it. It's it's boosting it, but yeah. it's shaping the mids, but it's still leaving the the, the square waveform yeah. in it. And it's got huge headroom as well, huge so it can headroom. take it at the input. It might be that the amp eleven is caving yeah, in a bit. Yeah, right. So you're you know you're trying to shove three pints into a one pint pot. Hey. Whereas uh, to continue that analogy, the um, later on tonight, <laughs> the clon is a gallon jug, <laughs> and it can just take it. Hey, that was one of those October fest. That wasn't bad at all. Um, Yoris Rass, hello Yoris. Um, would you please, please, please find some way to get the edge on the show? I'd give both my kidneys for it. Um, uh, yeah. Look, to be honest, he keeps calling. <laughs> you know, it's getting a little bit embarrassing. I yeah, I think there's a. Because it would sound, uh, it would sound like I'm denigrating some of our friends. Like I don't think you, people necessarily understand how megastar people like you two are. Mm -hmm. Like crazy, can't go anywhere without bodyguards. They just don't do shit like this, do they? So apologies for the swearies. No, no. I mean, he he did that thing with. Um, Jimmy Page and, and the BBC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so... <laughs> yeah, it would be great. Dave, if you're watching, you're very welcome on the show. If you know him, Dave, Yeah. and um, by all means, you know, tell him that he's always welcome. Oh, sorry, no, I was talking to Dave. I'm saying to Dave, if he knows that, No, he age. wasn't called Dave. I'm saying Dave Evans. Oh, as in the yeah. edge, Dave Evans. Yeah, yeah. All right, sorry. <laughs> uh, the Holy Moly says, who's your favourite Red Dwarf character? Don't like Red Dwarf. No, nor me. I've never, I, you know, Star Trek and all those things. Really liked it. My wife is a big Red Dwarf fan, and I never got into it. You know, tried, but but I just no. Wasn't a single episode I ever saw. I went, oh, that's really good. Yeah, it didn't didn't really work for me. No. But Robot Wars, awesome. Uh, Jamie Hill says I was sold on a Sunface until that. Don't know what that is. Similar sound, possible from a US telly, Victory Sheriff 22 and Blues Junior 4. Which fuzz and model for his first fuzz? Uh, so Jamie's saying he's got an American telly, uh, Victory Sheriff 22 and a Blues Junior 4. Fuzz um, face would be awesome with that. Fuzz face would be good with that. Yeah, you just got to watch the gain on the Sheriff. There's a lot of gain in Victory Sheriff amps. So if, if you've got it any more than about nine o'clock on the gain pot, you probably find that the fuzz would... Depends on how you're setting the fuzz, though. Yeah. Like, I don't have... I, I turn the fuzz all the way up, and then I back it off. Yeah. Quite substantial. Like, well, you know, it's the, it's the last 10% on your gain knob on the fuzz where all the yeah. magic happens. And I just back it off. to, And I basically, I'm riding uh, the volume pot set like that. I'm using that as a booster. I have that on, like, most of the time. So it, even into a gain amplifier, set up like that, it would sound great. Exactly. But if you crank the fuzz and that's the sound that you're after, then putting it into like a, yeah. an angry victory isn't really going to do the Especially with a fuzz face, which has loads and loads and loads of bass. So yeah, you might yeah, want to yeah, look yeah. at something like a, some of the tone bender yeah. variants yeah. over the years, which have had less like the Zonk machine. Wow, oh, perfect. I've got one coming from Dan Drive. Right. And it's orange. <laughs> Um, to ben, yeah. ben Christopher, where does the golden fleece fall in the first category? It's very similar to Joey's signature, but quite different than the fuzz face. I, isn't the golden fleece basically a, a transistor overdrive? I don't know it. I think it is. 
Okay. I think it is. It's a really, really nice one knob transistor overdrive that goes into first. I think. Zach, if you're still watching, let us know. Um, you, you'd like that. Okay. You really would like that. All right. Yeah. Uh, golden Fleece. Mythos Golden Fleece. Yeah, sort of overdrive -y, distortion -y, distortion -y. fuzzy! Okay. Yeah. It's like the, like the, um, that was the marketing campaign. Is that the, like, like the Bad Bob boost? More. Okay. Wow. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's fuzzier. Fuzzier. Uh, right. Uh, let's see. David F. Thank you, David Thank F. Thank you, F. Thank you very much, David. Great episode on Fuzz. This is an awesome channel. Have a beer, latte, etc. on me. Um, we will use it for the production of the show, David. Thank you very much. Uh, because, by golly. <laughs> um, Master Machete again, hi, says, for those of us who can't get our hands on Ron Ellis pickups, were you considering anything else for blue? Yes, I was. Uh, the Fender Fat 60s, Custom Shop Fat 60s. That's your phone. Um, so I've got, uh, yeah, I'm just, I nearly threw it in the sea the other day. <laughs> I'm, I'm approaching that moment. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to A-B those two sets. And the reason I'm going to do that is because all the Fender Custom... Well, the majority of the Fender Custom Shop guitars that I play that I really like tend to have Fat 60s pickups. Oh, wow. And I just think they're a great all-rounder. Mm. Um, it's quite interesting. Okay. It's really interesting. Um, Mark Foley makes unbelievably good Strat pickups. Really? If Matt Schofield uses them... Wow. And Scott McKeon used them. Wow. And Simon Law says they're the best. That's pretty serious recommendation. Amazing. So I would check out some of Mark Foley's... Um, Where's he based? Isle of Wight. No way. Uh, they are called... I can't remember what they're called. 59 something or other, pre-CBS. Anyway, check out Mark Foley. Mark Foley pickups. Um, Was that really, again? Really brilliant stuff. Mark Foley? No, people don't understand this sometimes, do they? Um... Marco Livoni, Marcello Livoni says, how does the Dunlop fuzz face work with a clean Princeton black face? Great. Won't be very clean by the time you hit it with a yeah. with a fuzz face. It'll be overdriving mm. beautifully. Yeah. Whether I don't know if the black face, yeah, as a 10-inch speaker, whether that's going to be able to cope with all that bottom end. It'll just go farty and brilliant, won't it? Be great. It just depends how hard you're driving the amplifier. Yeah. But they tend to, it doesn't take a lot with those ones to get them rocking, does it? Mm. Joe Brennan, do you know of any tilt back solutions for head and cab setups? <laughs> the last one oh, I saw was that piece of plastic that you put the thing on, the speaker faces backwards, and there's like this port that comes out the bottom. <laughs> We've got a delivery. Question for Dan. Oh, okay. Um, there are various amp stands available. There are various amp stands available, but n uh, nothing I can think of. There was a thing, a little plastic thing called the tilt back, and it was a little, like, almost like a warning triangle. Uh, and you, it had a piece of cloth on it and a, and a plastic frame, and you just set it up and let your amp back. Tilt back, tilt back, see if that still exists. Tilt back, okay, one second. Dan's disappearing, so I'll carry on. Um, have any of you tried the 65 ounce color bender, says Mark FX. It's awesome. No, I haven't. Sorry, but that sounds like it would be great. Um, Rydox says, Fat 60s, never liked overwound Alnico 2s. Um, love the custom 69, wound super low, but allowed and dynamic as anything very vintage sounding. Yeah, I think in 69 they were still they were still using plain en uh, enamel, were they, for the winding by that point? Don't know. That's a whole world I know so little no, about. No, as a Strat fan, I don't either, really. Um, Simon Lewis says, Hey, can you use one expression pedal between two wetter boxes? Regards, Simon. Uh, Simon, well, you can. There's a um, Mission Do expression pedal. Um, we've actually got it for wetter boxes. That actually has three outputs, so you can yeah chain up to three. Three devices that use an expression pedal into those things. So yeah, absolutely. Will work a treat. Dylan Morgan, hey Dan, do you still have the pig dog juju? And if you do, could you feature it again, please? Love the show and everything you do. Sure do. It's Is the somewhere. juju a tone bender? Yeah, basically. Um, where is it? 
it has it's the best finish on any pedal I've ever seen so I don't tend to put it on the board a lot because I don't want to get banged I think it's got one little nick in it already where is it the juju I did see it just recently it is here somewhere while you're looking for it noise code says I find that when I play certain fuzzies my strat springs really ring through creating an unwanted noise <laughs> what is your opinion on stuffing the back cavity um I am such a fan of that <laughs> resonance yeah. through the springs in a massive way. So I wouldn't stuff the back cavity, but I know people who do. The other thing you can do is just get really small like fingers of um, foam and stuff it down the spring. That can help. But I don't know. The, the whole part of it is that, mm. isn't it? All the um, extraneous stuff. There's so the juju. That's the juju from Pig Dog London. The, the finish on it, I mean, it's iridescent blue. It's just magnificent. Um, so, and it's, yeah, wonderful. His All of his stuff, man, his stuff just sounds so ace. Um, Jamie Hill, <laughs> bless you, Jamie. Um, he's just stuck in another fiver, thank you. Um, to clarify, uh, that was the epic fuzz face tone you had. So that versus a sun face for the range that you had. Victory 22 set clean. Um, yeah, the sun face will do it. My BC183 will will do it. Yeah, my... my um, um and, and the shaping overdrive thereafter, so some sort of clon type after is... Yeah, my, my NKT 275 sounds magic. Yeah, and yeah, if the, if the 22 is set clean, it should, should yeah. work quite nice. Yeah, yeah, be great. Should work quite nice. Uh, right, Daniel, we should think about it. It's ten past seven. Is it? Oh, my word. I'm hungrier than... Uh, yeah. Sean Ashley, any advice on an affordable baseman clone? I've heard the Electro Harmonics MG50 is decent. Any recommendations? That's. I would like to know the answer to that question as mm. well. I had... Uh, what did I have? I had... A, uh, in the late 90s, I had a baseman clone. And it was okay till i heard an old basement yeah, yeah it's it's funny isn't it affordable if it's kind of you know predominantly hand wired on a proper old tag board mm. or whatever they were either mm. board i don't know what the basements mm. were but whatever you know with separate valve sockets and inputs i.e it's not all there on a pcb if you want all of that somebody's going to have to make it which means you're either into custom shop type yeah yeah, prices yeah. from somebody like Dr. Z or whoever, or, you know, way north of there, or you're into some sort of glorified kit built by someone who knows what they're doing, much cheaper, mm -hmm. It's available. Yeah, yeah. And, and don't forget that those, those amps, right, when you, you know... When you see someone doing the point-to-point -point thing, it's not because point-to-point -point sounds better or whatever. It's when those amps came out and they gave us those classic guitar sounds. That's how they were built. That was the standard production for those amplifiers. And when you change, you know, you, you just got to change the value of one resistor, for example. Yeah, the whole thing's different. different. Yeah. So, of course, it's going to sound different if you completely change the way that the amplifier is, is set up, you yeah. know, and to, the way it's doing its thing. If you want... To get close to that stuff, you've got to look at the process of how the amplifier is doing its thing yeah, yeah, yeah. and get as close to that as possible. Yeah. It's look anyone else, you look at the way that the pickups work, um, like in any other part of the uh ecosystem, and it's sh it shows that mm -hmm. the, the facts bear out that um the closer that you get to that original stuff, the closer you get to it sounding yeah. like it did. Yeah. So and it's the same with with amplifiers. You know, it's just a uh, uh, what kind of basement as well. What, one of the best basements I played was um, Analog Mike's Blackface. Ah. Uh, well, but of course, when you say basement, you think about tweed. Yeah. But 50s. that is the head. Yeah. 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 That was Mc a cracking man. Um, what a fantastic hand. Um, Patrick McManus and Neandra are asking how much the Mig Fifty is like the basement. It's it's very similar. The We've Mig got, Fifty, uh, a, a modded Mig Fifty behind me there. Yeah, it's glorious, glorious. Josh Scott thing. from JHS gave us. 
Um, I think That's the, a... the new ones are quite different, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the new Ultra Harmonic ones. Yeah, yeah. That's an yeah. original one from the nineties. Yeah. Um, it, that was my main amp for years. Uh, I toured with Max Sharam for years in Australia, and that was the rig. That into a four by twelve, into a basket weave four by twelve. Um, and it's just the most glorious sounding thing. We I, I actually did a couple of TV shows, and we had um, I think Marshall had just brought out those massive purple amplifiers. The yeah. was it all red. Thirtieth anniversary with some purple stuff. Yeah, yeah. And they brought them down to the TV studio, had them all set up, and looked amazing. Plugged them in, and I'm just going, yeah, something wrong with your guitar sound? Or was that, you know, really working hard to try and get these things to sound okay? In the end, kept them kept them on there for the show. Behind it was the Soltec <laughs> into a little, you know, and it was yeah, it was really wonderful, wonderful pedal platform amplifier. If you can find an old one from the nineties, it's. We should, use that one again. we should yeah, use yeah, that one again. Yeah, yeah, really great. Uh, F.M. Haberman. Hi, Mick. Strat question. I've got an analog BC-183, analog man. Yes, I do too. I love it, but when the volume is at naught, it makes a weird noise. I presume you mean the volume on the guitar is at naught. Uh, I tried a first face and the same thing happened. Is that a thing? Yes. So the volume will be on one on the guitar and it will be silent. You'll turn it to naught and then it'll go... Uh, don't know. <laughs> no doubt somebody knowledgeable in the comment section will know why that is. Why is that? You've you've basically grounded the Everything's input. Everything's going to ground, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you grounded the input. And uh, is there any current? I, I don't know. I have to have yeah. a look at it. Uh, let's finish on this one. Heiner2000 says, can you feature your own pedal boards on a future episode? We do one a year, don't we, pretty much? We do. And we actually have some gigs coming up that um, I'm going to sort of redo my board for because they're going to be just some different sounds on there. Um, but we're doing some gigs with Andy Timmons in the UK. Which is nuts. Look out. So they're going to be in April and there's going to be four dates. I think there's one in Liverpool. We're doing one at the Cavern in yeah. Liverpool. We're doing one in Birmingham somewhere. Birmingham at the at the Asylum 2. And then we're doing... Water Rats in London. Water Rats in London. And Fat Lils in Whitney. Yeah. So we, yeah, we're doing April. a little tour with Andy Timmons, which is really... It's going to be amazing. Bonkers. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> so, yes. Uh... Yeah, we should do the, the yeah. board for that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've actually got a new pedal board coming, Daniel. Do you? Yes. What do you got? I've got a Schmidt Array SA350. What's that? It's not a 250. And it's not a 520. Oh. Okay. So it's like the little one, but that one. A little wide. bit bigger? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because I'm trying to get down to six pedals, six or eight pedals maybe. Okay. Or seven or six. Right. Yeah. I'm trying to get down to the most minimal setup I can get to. Right. Which will probably mean a QMX4 or two QMX4s. Okay. Um, on us on the small board. Okay. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Because I reckon if we go on with Andy, you're going to have like the mother of oh, all pedal boards. I, I, it's going to be ridiculous. He's going to have the mother of all pedal boards. Yeah. So there won't be room for a of third one. Of course there will. Of course. Imagine that. Imagine the front of the stage. <laughs> I just, ah, oh, dude. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. If I've got a program sounds, obviously I'll need the G2 and everything sure. else. But, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. See, how, see how we go. Yeah. Well, you, you might not need to. I love my little 250 just with a few little few things yeah, yeah. on and it. It sounds so good. You stick the clon on it and then... There's no, no space for anything else. Sure. So, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, right. Taylor Green says, cheers from Salt Lake City, Utah. Thanks for all your great content. I appreciate you guys. Thank you, Taylor. That's thank very you, kind Taylor. Of you. Yeah, thank you, mate. And Big Time says, thanks for all the hard work. Thank you. Yeah, you're Big, so welcome. That, that you see it as work because it is work sometimes, isn't it, Dan? Yeah. It, yeah. It's tremendously pleasurable work, but it's work nonetheless. To be fair, it's a lot more work for you. <laughs> <laughs> Rydock says, Dan, go and eat some meat. So let's do that. Ah, uh, okay. Done. Cheers, guys. Thank you so much for yep. joining us. Uh, have a fantastic week. Um, thanks to our preferred retailers. Thanks to all of our patrons. Uh, thank you to everyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed some merch. And we'll have some tickets up there soon, hopefully, for the gigs uh, in April. Uh, but yeah, have a great week, guys. And vlog tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow's video will either be Dan and Adam Neely or it'll be my strat vlog. Or we might why don't we just do one on Tuesday and one on Wednesday, Dan? Perfect. Let's let's go crazy. Wow. Loads of TPS content this week. And on Friday there's a show about boosters. Yeah, nice. Cheers guys, have a great week. We'll see you soon. Bye!